Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Sec MRI. And this is a 71-year-old female with a history of a prior injury. She's got shoulder pain, and her MRI looks pretty good at first glance. Her AC joint looks good. Her glenohumeral joint looks very good. She has no rotator cuff tear. I can put up a, another view here. We can see it's coronal PD fat sat. View you can see the supraspinatus coming across, coming down here. You could argue there may be a little bit of tendinosis, but really the rotator cuff looks good with no full thickness tear. Tiny amount of fluid in the AC joint, so overall things look very, very good. She did not have an obvious labral tear. Here's her superior labrum. Here's her inferior labrum. So the only thing we see is down here along the inferior joint capsule. This is posterior. Things are pretty dark and relatively normal. If we go to the midline cut, this does look a little bit too thick and a little bit too bright on the PD sequence. If we go forward, it looks a little bit too bright. Now if we go up to the top, here again things look very, very good around. So the only thing we're left with is a little bit of bright signal along the inferior and anterior aspect of the joint capsule. If we put up this view, this is a T1 weighted sequence. We started with this. Here's posterior, it looks a little thick. Here's a midline cut, it looks a little thick. Here, a little thick, so very subtle findings. On the axial images, things look pretty good overall. If we go down towards the inferior margin of the glenohumeral joint, down in here, I'm looking for that joint capsule to see if it looks thick. And right in here, it does look just a little bit thick. Nothing dramatic, but looks a little bit too bright, a little bit too thick. There's no fluid in the joint, so this is consistent with adhesive capsulitis, where the joint capsule will become thickened and inflamed and a little bit bright on the PD fat set sequence, and they have a lack of joint fluid. The other thing I look for in a case like this, especially where it's very subtle, um, is up around the coracoid process. Usually around the coracoid process you see a little bit of fat wrapping around adjacent to it and this patient just looks socked in with low signals. So this may be some scarring up in this region around the rotator interval. Again there's no fat around the coracoid process. So this is consistent with adhesive capsulitis. She does have complaints of shoulder pain and limited range of motion. Usually uh, this is associated with uh, adults who are between 40 and 60, this patient's 70, a little bit older, um, and this can be associated with prior injury. People with diabetes have this more often. People who don't move their shoulder, like if you have a, if you've had a, again an injury or if you had a stroke or prior surgery, you're more likely to develop this. And again, these patients have pain and limited range of motion. The pain can be really severe, and they have a lack of joint fluid, and again, this thickening of the anterior and inferior joint capsule, just like this, a little bit of bright signal, and again, up around the coracoid process, especially in the T1 images, we just don't see any nice, clean fat collection. And that's it. This is an example of a very mild, kind of subtle adhesive capsulitis.